Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. We are here with Mitch Ribak down there in warm, sunny Cocoa Beach, Florida. 20 years as a realtor, independent broker, now over here at EXP for the last four and a half years. Got a great story. Let's do it. Here we go. What's up, buddy? Thank you very much, man, for jumping on here. Yeah, totally of course, appreciate it, man. One of our business partners. We're all working together. That's one of the things I love about this. But you're down there in uh, your sunny, warm Florida. What's well? What's the well, temperature? let's let's clarify that a little bit. It's yesterday was 37 degrees in the morning, um, <laughs> and it usually is very warm and sunny. And today it's it's a mess. It's it's like 50 degrees and cold. And I don't even think I can play golf this week. It's going to be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> My brother lives in Tampa. It gets to fifty. They're wearing the winter coats, and it's it's panic oh, yeah. time. You know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm I, I, had my hat on. I had my hat on this morning. I had my coat. I was like, got my long sleeves. I never wear long sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, I appreciate your time, man. I know you're a busy guy down there. Um, totally appreciate you jumping on here. So I know you got a great story. Sure. You you are I was you know you're an entrepreneur at heart. Yes, chronic. I've had twenty three. Yeah, tell a little bit of your story. Yeah, you tell a bit of your story even prior to, to real estate. You know, you you've done quite a few things. Just yeah, talk yeah, a little so, about that. Yeah, so I've been uh, let's see. Well, I started my first business was nineteen. It was a modular home business. Um, I think I sold two of them, and I didn't like it. It was kind of boring, which is kind of funny. That I'm in real estate, right? Um, I did. I was the third paintball business in the country. Uh, I've owned restaurants. I've owned uh, marketing companies. I owned an ad agency. I owned, um, she's what else? I owned a regular yeah, dating service. Online, didn't you have the first online dating? Yep. It was the first yeah. online dating service. <laughs> um, I've had a, a coaching company. I've had a real estate brokerage. I uh, had an education company. I've, that's 23 companies in 42 years. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. wow. Good for I, you. I started when I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what led to real estate? Um, being. That? Being broke like everybody else. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so we had the online dating service. I saw I ended up in Florida. We were under contract to sell. We moved. Uh, part of the deal is I had to lower my expenses from Boston down to somewhere else. Uh, ended up. Ended up. Long story. How I ended up here. I was doing a radio show out of Universal Studios. Ask the date doctor. Very fun. And um, so we uh, asked my friend. The office space like was in Cocoa Beach, and it was twelve dollars a foot, which is free. So I came over here to look, and I was 38 years old, single, looking in girls in bikinis. I'm like, <laughs> no brainer. Uh, so I moved here 30 days later, and in 2000, April of 2000, if you remember, the internet bubble burst. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to close in June. I lost everything in about 30 days. Oh wow! And okay. we're talking, we're talking like 80 million dollars. Everything. It was a really bad wow. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I bawled my eyes out for three days. Uh, mm -hmm. Tried to keep the company going for a year. And all my friends were like, Mitch, get your real estate license. You'd be great at real estate. I'm like, I don't like realtors. Why would I do that? So anyways, I was broke. I really had $14,000 in the bank. And and uh, my buddy Joe from Boston said, Mitch, get your license and I'll help you out a little bit. We'll buy a couple of startup management company. We'll buy a couple of properties and I'll pay for them. And so he, he did that. But I, I it was easy. I sold 36 homes my first year, uh, 50 my second year, 80 my third year, 80 my fourth year. I'm like, I don't really understand the the difficulty is selling homes. I didn't know anybody here and I still sold 36 homes my first year. Wow. Um, and then I started my brokerage in 05 and we went from six agents to uh, 120 in 2016. And wow. finally I you know, looked, I was also at the time I owned a company called inside sales agents. We did internet lead conversion for um, uh, brokerages all over North America. And cause my background is internet lead conversion for real estate. I've done a lot of that and, I was the, God, the godfather of, of lead conversion, which is really funny. Originally, they wanted to call me the grandfather, but I'm like, that sounds too old. <laughs> so it's the godfather. Yeah. <laughs> it's like for my, my Jewish Italian friends. Um, and so um, so I went to look for a solution. You know, so my solution for other businesses, I just sell them. I was working 100 hours a week. I was 55 years old. My parents both died in the late 50s. Most of my relatives died in their 50s. And 
I just kind of freaked out of what happens if something happens to me. You know, the uh, the high part of all this brokerage is never an exit strategy, right? Yeah. Uh, so I really did. I have, a, I have a granddaughter with a, a rare disease who's now the lead singer in my rock band, which is kind of cool. Um, and EXP lets me have the time to play in a rock band. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so I went to sell the company, got two offers, uh, both $3.5 million from two franchise companies and major companies. And, you know, when you get down to the final negotiations, you know, they give you a little bit of money now, a little bit of money the second year. And the bulk of the money is based on the attention of the original, at that time, 120 agents. And I can't say on camera what I actually said to them, but I basically told them no, because uh, it wasn't, you know, I know there's some nice people out there and I don't want to swear. Uh, I, I literally got off the call, not the call, it was a meeting, walked out of the meeting with them. In the next seven days, I fired 50 agents. Uh, all my agents weren't selling houses. They were costing me the most amount of money. I called Jason Guessing, the CEO of EXP, because I'd already met with Jason three times before because I loved the concept. I always loved the model, but my ego was in the way. You know, I'm I'm Mitch yeah. Ripback. I'm the big guy. You know, I'm only five six, so I have to really be a big ego, right? And and the reality was is, is I wasn't making any real money as a broker. I I just got the phone with the broker. I was helping join the company now, and she's like, lost seventy five hundred dollars with her ten agents last year. You know, so that's very wow. typical of a lot of a lot of brokers. And I was making a living, you know, but I also had my coaching business, and I also, you know, I, I had my books that were selling, so I stuff that was out there. That's the only way I could sell, and I sold home still. Um, so anyways, I met Jason up in, in New York at Inman in January, 2017. And my biggest problem was Tropical Realty was a big company here. So I said, um, I don't know how to deal with that from an ego standpoint, from a, from a branding standpoint, everybody knows who we are. We do 700 transactions a year. It'd just be Tropical Realty brokered by EXP. I'm like, that's it? He goes, yeah, that's it. So I came keep home and had brand, Keep the brand, keep all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I came home and had a conversation with my wife, and it was a really interesting conversation. My wife, my wife's been corporate her whole life, so she's not an entrepreneur. I'm like, let's figure it out, let's do it. And so she said, um, well, first of all, I told her about who they were, and she's googling everybody. Who is this Glenn Sanford guy? And uh, and doing that because she's doing her homework. And you know, remember, she just all she heard was we have a three and a half million dollar offer on the table, mm -hmm. um, two of them. So I said, here's the deal: if it does think it's going to do then we could retire in five years if it doesn't i can always flip the switch back on and be tropical realty beachside all over again it wasn't it was, and she said well what do we have to lose i said we don't have anything to lose so let's do it so she bought in i was totally blown away by the way that she actually did that because she's way more cautious than me yeah. that's why we were broke up until that point because I, I always took risks right yeah. and this, this was a huge risk because at the time no broker had ever switched over uh, of my size there were a couple of smaller right. brokers, five agents. Uh, went and talked to 30. Uh, and how big were you at that point, right there? Uh, now we're 65 agents. We got okay. rid of 100. Wow. We had 120. We got rid of 50. Went right. to 65. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, talked to my 34 top agents that did 92% of the business and said, look, if we don't like it, we'll switch back. And that was the, the ongoing messaging. Look, if we don't. And remember, back then, there was 50 agents in Florida. In only 2,800 in the, in the country. So it wasn't like everybody, everybody was like ESP who? <laughs> yeah. um, you know? Anyway, so long story short, I'm making it very long, but we switched over in June of 2017 with 40 agents. We lost 25 in the switchover. Okay. Um, again, nobody heard of us. 19 of those 25 never sold a house. By, uh, of the other six, three of them have now joined us. Okay. Right. Um, two and two retired. So retired, but quit the business. Uh, we now have, we're going to hit 1,700, I think today. We're going to hit 1,700 agents today. Uh, wow. 40, 45 states, seven countries. I went from working 80 to 100 hours a week. I work 35, maybe 40 hours sometimes, which is an entrepreneur. That's a part-time job. Uh, and mm -hmm. like I said earlier, I play in a rock band with my grandkids, which is amazing. Uh, I'm a better husband. I mean, that's my relationship is completely off the charts better now right. because I'm present now. When I had my brokerage, I was never present. I was there. So mm -hmm. I was doing this all day long, right? Phone call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you need? What do you need? Because I get, you know, 15, 20 calls a day every day. And it was 7 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Right. So that's my story. And here I am. Yeah. Now wow. I'm yeah. Well, I mean, congratulate. Well, 1,700. Congratulations on that, you know, and all the success you've had here. I know, you know, everybody in the company knows who you are. I mean, it's just, let me, let me ask you this. Let's go back a little bit. Like when, 
you know, knowing the, the, there's going to be all kinds of agents watch this, you know, brand new agents, seasoned agents, brokers, you know, all kinds of stuff. If you could go back, you know, to the beginning, you did 36 homes your first year. Is that right? Yeah. You were very similar in that sense. I was surprised. I did 32 my first year. I did about 50 my second, 72 my third. Almost you like that. Myself, no assistant. Very similar in that track. When you said those numbers, I'm like, that's we're, we're close there, you know? And right. it was crazy. I mean, you know, it was, I mean, the, that third year by myself was just, I mean, it was a lot of work. I mean, it was just, holy cow. My wife got her license in 2005. We started working together right. and we okay. built the team at Keller Williams, did a bunch of stuff. But go on, if you could go back and tell your, knowing what you know now, go back to like that as a brand new agent, what would you tell yourself knowing what you know now? Oh, so many things. Uh, number one thing is um, the people that do the least amount of business going to try to teach you how to sell houses. Don't don't listen to them because they don't know what they're doing. Um, you know, as much as I'm an internet guy, old school. I mean, I sold first six homes, twenty eight were from open houses. Wow. Yeah. So and and then don't don't chase the shiny objects. Pick something that you you want to do that you'll actually do. Like I teach a, a lot of stuff to my agents to try to find out what they'll actually do. Because I can teach you how to be successful. I can teach anybody how to be successful, as can you, Jeff, right? It's, it's not hard. Sure. But the problem is what you'll actually do. Because if you don't implement, you will fail. And that's the reason why most agents fail is because they don't implement anything. And they start chasing. Like I have one agent. I love her to death. Great girl. I think we're on month five right now. I, she hasn't shown any property yet. Because she's always going to classes. I'm like, stop, yeah. stop trying to learn this stuff. You're going to learn by doing this stuff. Get out there and do, and do your job. I didn't know nothing. And I actually started on nine, uh, September 10th, 2001. So the next day was 9-11. And then I knew my weaknesses were going to be contracts. This is the other thing. Learn your contracts. So I, because I'm A D D D D D D D D, I um I had to learn my contracts. So I spent Tuesday was 9-11, Wednesday. Thursday and Friday, I wrote 10 fake contracts those three days. And then I did my open house that I had no idea how to do. Now I've mastered them, of course, over the years. Um, and I sold my first house that day. Wow. Because and I, did, I had no idea what I was doing. I was driving to the open house. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to pretend I slept in the Holiday Inn Express last night <laughs> and be yeah. here all time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. No, awesome. I think, and we can get stuck. You know, so it's just that fear of actually getting out there and doing it because oh, I just I got to learn everything before I do it. And you're right, you are going to learn by doing it. You know, you'll make some mistakes. You'll, whatever. Yes. I mean, how many times have I made mistakes in this business in 20 years? You know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. My last book is called "So You Have Your Real Estate License Now." What? And it's really just yeah. it's just talking about going out there and doing it. I mean, there's lots of ways of doing stuff there. But um, if you want, Jeff, I'll, I'll share it with you, and you can give it to anybody that you want. Uh, again, I'll be great. I'll give you the PDF of it. And you just send it to whoever you want. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Um, because yeah. it just it does help people move. Because you got to move. You got to get. It's just like exercise. You got to get off your butt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and and how many years were you in the business before you went to be your own broker? Uh, four, four years. What what made you decide to do that? Like, why? Well, I think I want to be a broker. Like, what well, is just was it just the leverage part? Was it another adventure? Another, you know, more it's, entrepreneurial. It's, it's, it's the profession, out? right? It's what you're supposed to do. You know, I started my team in my third year. I started my brokerage in my fourth year. That's just the progression. I, if, knowing what I know now, I would never start at a brokerage in a million years. I would have been a team somewhere. Okay. I okay. made way more money as a team. And I had way more fun as a team. I made more money as a team of six than I did as a brokerage with 120. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's just okay. crazy. Um, yeah, so all the, the overhead. Yeah, well, overhead and all the 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 angst. I mean, you you you're a psychologist when you're a broker. I mean, every you know you you are when you're a team leader too. But the team leader of six or ten agents is a lot different than being a psychologist for 120 agents. Yeah. What was it, what would you say? What's what's the biggest pain point in terms? If you can put just one, what's the biggest pain point as far as being a broker? What was it for you personally? One is so hard to do because there's so many. Um, I had no control over my revenue and I couldn't change people. I spent my life helping people change. And, and every business I've had, I've always tried to get people to excel and move up to the next level and level up, level up. You've heard me talk before. I always talk about leveling up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so heartbreaking to me to see people that have so much potential not work, not implement. And that was, that was the hardest part. And then the financial part, I always say, I don't didn't control the revenue. So I'll give you an example. January and February, I would lose $80,000 in January and February because people stopped working in November and December. So I analyzed that. 
Why is that the case? Why do they stop working? Well, by November 1st, if they haven't hit their goals, they quit, give up their goals. And if they already hit their goals, they give up because they hit their goals. So they, it's the holidays. You know, there's three days there. You, know, you have two days of Thanksgiving, two days of Christmas, and New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, right? right. Five days that they have to take off 60 days for. My best closing, my best closing month always was January. Wow. Because nobody else worked during November and December. Yeah. So I remember when I started in that, when I started in that, you know, September 10th, 2001, that January I had, I had nine closings. That was only four wow. months old. Yeah. That's something I learned early on, you know? Um, yeah. I had some good coaching, good training early on. And I just learned, you know, do, do the opposite of what everybody else does. You know, what, they all pull back on their yeah, marketing exactly. in November, December. I'd ramp up my marketing. I'd ramp up all this stuff. Yeah. And yeah, we always have big Januaries and February because yeah. of all that. So yeah, yeah, you know, it's a great point. Yeah. So, so with that, and again, you know, the time factor, the money factor. So, you know, four and a half years ago now, you, you know, you get past your ego and I get that, yep, you know, okay. all, every realtor out there has an ego of some sort, okay. you know, but, and especially as a broker owner, I get it. You built this brand, you built this culture, you built this thing and it's like, and everybody knows it. it's Cocoa Beach and they all know it. And it's like, man, you know, whatever, like, like, like how has EXP and for how has EXP helped break that pain point, solve those pain points? Um, what I do don't, I don't chase people to be successful anymore, which is really a huge thing. I, I, people come to me all the time for help. I do about 20 hours a week of coaching, uh, free coaching for anybody. I don't care. Um, but I don't chase people anymore. So what it's created for me and the other part, you know, the other big thing, obviously I was missing my grandkids grow up just like I missed my kids growing up being an entrepreneur. Right? I, I, I didn't want to make that same mistake again. And yeah. so the, the pain point of being able to, Spend the amount of time I spent with my, my grandkids. I'm the father figure for them. Their dad's in the Air Force. So they're, he's gone. So I'm the yeah. father figure. And it's like a, it's like making amends for being, I wasn't a bad dad, but I wasn't there. Um, so, you know, I play ball three nights a week with my grandson and the band. And, um, you know, when I leave here, right after our interview, I'm going to hang out with my grandson for a while. Um, just, you know, that's the cool stuff, right? So it, gives, it gave me freedom. I'll give you an example of freedom, though. Uh, in September, my wife and I got to drive around the country for 32 days, and I've, I haven't done a vacation since 1989 like that uh, when I owned my paintball business. And uh, I, forgot, I forgot that one. I was a big paintball guy. Um, and um, we took 32 days, drove around the country. I got five phone calls the entire time. Wow. I, I mean, so it, created, it truly is creative. Here's what I tell people. It created what I thought being a broker would be. I thought being a broker would give me leverage so I could spend more time with my family. And what it created, and I, I don't mean this bad, badly or mean to anybody, but it created a babysitter job. And, and and so what now is I have people being helped for the people that want to be helped, right? Which I love. And mm -hmm. and I get more time with my family. So it's creating freedom. I mean, I'm, I, I've, even when I had the $80 million from the other company, I was making a ton of money back then. I didn't have the freedom I have today. Yeah, that's awesome. Sort of like well, the freedom team, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember those days. I mean, because again, we were, I built a team, you know, and was at Keller Williams for five years. Great company, no issues there. I just, I wasn't using any of their stuff, which is why I left there. I just, I'm like, you know, I had all my own websites, tools, everything. But I just yeah. remember those days, you know, yeah, I was leveraged. We could do more deals. But I remember going on vacation. I remember being in Ireland yeah. with my wife and kids. We're on a 10 day trip to Ireland. My God, see, we're staying in castles. I mean, it's just like, it was such an amazing trip, you know? Beautiful, yeah. But I remember being on my phone from Ireland, you know, at, you know, sometimes, you know, three o'clock in the morning, time differences and stuff, having to get out of bed and go, cause I've got a deal back here, one of my agents and it's falling apart and they need my help. And I'm, you know, it's just, I'm not on vacation. <laughs> you know, I mean, I right. am, but it's like, Oh my God, I'm dying. You know, no I just, I see these posts. I, I saw a post. There's a big agent here in Colorado Springs and everybody here knows who he is. I'm not going to say his name, but I remember seeing this. This is like this, I don't know, it's probably four or five months ago. He's with his wife and his kids. He's at the Denver airport and they're heading to Mexico, you know? And he's like, you know, whatever, here's the family, whatever. And it's like, you know, get ready. You know, can't wait, you know, beach, here we come, whatever. By the way, you know, I've got my laptop with me. If I can help you in any way with your real estate needs, I'm always here to help. I just want to like reach to the computer. I'm like, no, like, don't do that. You know, it's like your kids need you. Your wife needs you. Like you need to be, a, you need a break. We yeah. all need those breaks. I think we well, run ourselves into the ground sometimes. You know? Yeah, there's no end in sight, you know, and, and, you know, when you're thinking about longevity and generational wealth and, you know, let's say most realtors work until they're 100 years old because they have to. Yeah, that's just the reality. And, you know, the best part to me of EXP 
obviously just what you know the, all the stuff I've said, but the fact that if I die today, this is the security and the freedom. My wife is licensed because of this. She just takes my spot. I mean, how how amazing is that to know that if I die, which by the way, I'm not going to die until I'm 142, so I got plenty of time left. Yeah. But if I if I die, my wife takes my spot, and our, our daughter's getting licensed right now. She'll have her. I think she takes her test next week. Right. She'll step in if my wife dies. Right. My granddaughter who's 16 in March. When she turns 18, we are making her get her license, not to sell houses, but just to be, for that longevity. So we're creating an EXP generational wealth. That's what a huge. blessing that is. It's a blessing. That's huge. It's huge. huge what that could do. And right now, you said 1,700 agents. Like, hey, can you? Because that's like some people outside. What outside of EXP? They're like, there's like that. Just and number I, one, it sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like more headaches than I could ever possibly handle. Like to build a brokerage within the brokerage. Can you just explain that idea here? Like how the, the no borders. Explain how yeah. that works. With this. Yeah. So I mean, so I have. I personally only have brought on 87 people. Man. I don't have 87 active right now, but that's how many people I brought over the last four and a half years. Those 87 is what turned into 1,700. And I don't really know the numbers off the top of my head, but I'll give you a, an example. So that 87 turned into 120. That 120 turned into 300 and something. That 300 and something turned into 400 and something. That 400 and something turned into 500 and something and so on. That's that's how it grew. Um, I don't have the responsibility to, of most of the people. I, I have my group here locally that I help and support. My, my, my people I personally have brought in, I help and support. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know 85% of the people in my organization. Okay. They, they don't call me to shell houses. Now I, I do a lot of support, I do coaching and all that stuff. I help anybody, that, like I said, literally anybody that wants help, I'm here. And I put that out yeah. to every all 1,700 agents. But they don't because they all have people like me that brought them in. Right. So, you know, like Pete Middleton, you probably heard Pete's name. Pete's a great guy yeah. from San Diego. You know, he's a big part of my, he's 1100 of my 1700. Right. You know, uh, Dennis D'Souza, who brought Pete in, is a 1250 of my 1700. But there's mm -hmm. people that are under Pete that are like Chris, I don't know how to pronounce Chris's last name, Carico. He's 600 of Pete's 1100. Right. That's, so that's how it grows. It's, it's, it's true leverage. It's the, it's the exact definition leverage yeah. and that's the beauty of this model i mean it, to say it changes your life is, is an understatement yeah and you you know you're not the broker anymore so you're not liable for any of those no stress you don't have to you don't have to train them you 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 train you you collaborate i mean that's the other thing can you just, just hit that real quick and we'll be done here in a second like the collaboration piece of this i've been blown away in the four years i've been here like just the way everybody's working together because there's a lot of misconceptions out there about yeah. exp you know oh, it's a spiritual yeah. thing like i want i need the relationships i want to have yeah. relationships and talk you about that more, there's more relationships in exp than anything i've ever seen in my life i mean it's ridiculous yeah. and even though you may not personally see people face to face um so the collaboration is something i didn't expect it wasn't part of, it wasn't even on my radar when we joined exp uh nobody even talked about that when i joined exp um, i did it to just stop my little team and my little brokerage inside a brokerage and do my thing uh, I was hoping maybe if in five years I had a thousand people, that'd be really cool. I wasn't sure how that was going to happen, but it'd be cool. Um, but here's the deal. I'm going to give you an example of collaboration. If you were to hire me, not you because you're with EXP, but if you're a non-EXP broker or team and you hired me to work with your team on internet lead conversion, I charge $2,500 an hour. I do this all the time for EXP teams, right? I don't charge a penny. Yeah. That's collaboration. The reason, and why do I do that? Because we all own the company. So I think the number is 70% of EXP is owned by agents and brokers and, and management yeah. employees, 70%. So, yeah. you know, the people that are out there, do you own your company? If you don't own your company, you don't have the loyalty to the company that we do. And we have the loyalty because we own it. I have 24,000 shares. I'm pretty motivated yeah. to help you succeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. The better we all do, the better the brand does. The the more agents that want to join us, you know, yeah. the the better the better the stock does, and you know, yeah. those, that ownership. Yeah. And, and, and I want to, I want to add a little more to that because I think it's important for people listening. Sure. Is the people that teach stuff like I teach internet, I teach other stuff, open houses, because that's another forte. Um, the people that teach in EXP are people that sell. So a lot of places you go, people that teach the people. That, it was it was the saying: if you can't do it, you teach it. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So, but you know, you might get Elizabeth Riley talking about um, how to sell 75 homes a year through your circle of influence or Kyle Whistle on how to do video or Pete Middleton on luxury sales. 
we all pour our hearts into everybody to teach them. And it's all people that are actually really successful at what we do. Unlike mm -hmm. most, brokers. it's a whole, whole different dynamic. I mean, when I think of how I could have been with, uh, I won't say the names of the companies to be nice, but the three companies that up, the two companies that offered big money. And then KW did offer me a lot of money to switch over to them when they heard I was moving to EXP. And, um, and they have their thumb on you. Right. EXP, everything we do is it's agent done. The agents do everything. It's not the brokerage is just like a, a figurehead on top. It's the agents putting this all together. I mean, even the meeting in Puerto Rico last week, that was agents putting that together. The meeting in Cabo we have in March, that's agents putting that together. Yeah. It's pretty cool. The collaboration is amazing. Awesome. Yeah. You're going to be in Cabo? Of course. I go yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be I there too. All, I do all the fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's awesome. No, very cool. Well, I appreciate your time. I hear you. I hear you're a heck of a ping pong player. too. I'm a pretty good ping pong player. I used to be uh, 14th in Southern New England. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, good deal, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Congratulations again on all your success. And, you know, and again, I love the fact that, you know, like we're not connected directly financially. No. But, you know, but I look at it like we're all business partners here. We're yeah. all owners. We're all working together. That collaboration, we're all helping each other, you know, like us with our team, Freedom Team, we're doing trainings, you know, multiple times a week, you know, whatever. We're doing all kinds of stuff there. In addition, all the stuff that EXP offers, it's right. so overwhelming in such a good way. You know, it's just, it's, then, it's you, you, hit it, you hit it right on the head too. Like I do, I'd, I'd say about 50% of my calls per week are people not in my organization. Yeah. Well, that's Don't how we work together. Yeah. Oh, right. awesome. yeah. Well, good deal, Mitch. Well, I appreciate it. I will see you in Cabo. Nice and warm down there. It's going to be great. So, guys, uh, you know, Mitch, you can find him on Facebook. You can find him, I'm sure, LinkedIn, all the different places. If you want to reach out to sure. him, uh, whatever, definitely do that. Um, if you can send me that book, that'd be great. That, yeah, that'd be I'll, I'll email it to you when we're done. That'd be awesome. Definitely. I'll share that with, with a bunch of our team and, and get that out to people as well. So, um, very cool. So, guys, thank you very much. Uh, have a great rest of your week. Mitch, thank you. Enjoy Florida. I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much.